Dear friends, I am thrilled to announce the release of our second video in the stomach surgery series. This time we are delving into roux and by gastrogenostomy and deuterogenostomy for SMA syndrome. In this video, we will explore the intricacies of addressing superior mesenteric artery syndrome through roux and by gastrogenostomy and deuterogenostomy, providing you with comprehensive understanding of the procedure. I hope you have already watched our previous video on open gastrogenostomy and other relevant videos available on our app and uh, YouTube channel so that you understand this subject better. And for a better learning experience, please download our app or join the channel membership. The link for everything is given in the description of this video. So we have divided this video in three parts. In the part one, we will give you a clinical case scenario. In the second part, there will be a theoretical discussion. Uh, I mean, uh, how what is the theory behind the management of the SMS syndrome? And in the third part, we will showcase a live surgery for SMS syndrome. So stay tuned till the end of this video. This 45 year old female presented to us with history of postprandial fullness, bloating for last two months. She also gave a history of significant weight loss for last uh, uh, 8 kg in the last six months. On examination, the patient was emaciated, the BMI 13.8, abdominal scaphoid, and the rest of the examination was unremarkable. The routine workup was within normal limit. Again, I have discussed this point in my last video that these patient has chronic malnutrition, chronic dehydration because of the uh, features of uh, duodenal outlet obstruction or gastric outlet obstruction. So uh, the accurate picture that real uh, parameters will become apparent once you have resuscitated and rehydrated these patients. So there will be a fall in HP, fall in the albumin level and many times patient will present with the albumin of 3.5 and the moment you start correcting the dehydration it will fall to 2.5 or 2. She was subjected for uh, upper GI endoscopy in which there was lots of uh, lots of uh, food residue in the stomach. Uh, D1 normal, D2 was abnormally dilated, and D3 was non-distensible. However, no obvious structure or growth. So there was gastric stresses, dilated D2, non-distensible D3, with no uh, obvious uh, mechanical cause. So this is a classical picture of upper GI endoscopy for SMS syndrome and patient was advised CT enterography. Again, you have to remember all these findings of CT scan and these are very classical for SMS syndrome, stomach over distended. The first and second part are duodenum distended, measuring up to 2.5 cm caliber. There is evidence of compression on the third part of duodenum D3 between iota and SMA with iotomesentic distance measuring 6 mm with iotomesentic angle of 24 degree. So just remember these figures 6 mm distance, 24 degree uh, angle, and we will discuss uh, how to interpret these findings in the uh, as the discussion will evolve. There was no other abnormality uh, in the third part of duodenum. There was also evidence of compression of the left renal vein between iota and the SMA. So this is a new term, uh, I mean, for my junior trainees, that is nutcracker syndrome. So that is one of the differential diagnosis of microscopic hematuria. There is an abnormal compression of the renal vein. So that uh, leads to the congestion in the kidney and that can be the cause of the microscopic hematuria, one of the differential diagnosis known as the nutcracker syndrome. So the impression was SMS syndrome. Uh, with nutcracker syndrome. So these are the axial images or oh, sorry sagittal images uh, depicting the iotomesentric angle and the distance and as I said uh, we will discuss uh, more uh, the interpretation of these findings uh, in the theoretical part for the time being just remember uh, I mean whenever you are evaluating these patients you have to ask for these curves from your radiology colleagues and you have you need to interpret these findings very carefully. These are the axial images with lots of food residue and the, this radiopaque uh, thing is the rice tube in C2 with air food level in the stomach. In these axial images, you can very well appreciate that there's a narrowing in the D3 part between the basically SMA and the uh, this iota. So there's an acute kink here and there's an upstream dilatation of the D1, D2. 
सो इन दिस एक्सल इमेजेस द सेम डे टी वन डी टू टैलेंटेशन सो फ्रेंड्स देर विल बी ए डॉट लाइक रेडियोपेक दिस स्ट्रक्चर जस्ट अबव द आयोटा फर्स्ट थिंग विल बी द सीलिक एक्सिस द सेकेंड ब्रांच विल बी एस एम एंड हेयर यू कैन वेरी वेल एप्रिशिएट द एस एम ए यू कैन ऑल्सो एप्रिशिएट द नैरोइंग बिटवीन द एस एम ए एंड द आयोटा लीडिंग टू द एस एम ए सिंड्रोम so here is one trick of the trade for you guys is that whatever surgery you are contemplating for these patient always consider the feeding genostomy because there is a preoperative malnutrition chronic gastric outlet obstruction predisposed to the delayed gastric emptying and you after simply doing a bypass you may face a difficulty so whenever you are contemplating any surgical procedure always always consider these patient with the uh, additional procedure of feeding genostomy for early resumption of the feed again uh, some of these points are repetition from my previous talk on the gastric outlet obstruction in which we demonstrated the open gastrogenostomy ruined by open gastrogenostomy so always take your time never be in hurry to rush uh, these patient to the ot restore the blood volume correct the electrolytes uh, there will be secondary anemia as i said that uh, after the correction uh, there will be acute fall in these all the parameters vitamin level all these things should be supplemented we always do at least uh, proper gastric lavage for a week so that uh, the stomach uh, regains its uh, uh, tonicity and whenever we are planning these patient we require a spine position with the uh, exploration through upper midline and uh, with the uh, head and raise above the foot level Uh, at least by a foot so our plan for this patient was uh, to do a midline exploratory laparotomy and ru and y dunogenostomy with the addition of the feeding genostomy as i said and uh, in this case intraoperatively there was a Uh, some narrowing at the pylorus so we added a ru and y gastrogenostomy and in the same limb we did duodenogenostomy followed by duodenogenostomy uh, as a ru and y part and followed by uh, this feeding genostomy so uh, we will showcase both the procedure uh, and uh, so that uh, you have a better grasp of the procedure and uh, uh, then uh, you have a better understanding that in this we will discuss the theoretical behind what are the procedure of label and what are the management rationale for a sms syndrome so friends uh, do download our app or join the channel membership for a better learning experience and to have access to our premium content thank you very much i hope we were able to add some new insight to your knowledge uh, thanks for watching do like the content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for the future updates thank you very much happy learning